humans also have dominant and recessive traits. However, we have a much longer generation time, and so it's very hard to grow a few humans and watch what the flower color is and then have them self with each other. It doesn't really work out. So in humans, we really have to look at family histories or pedigrees. So I wanted to briefly introduce you to a couple of pedigrees showing both dominant and then recessive inheritance patterns. So dominant traits will generally show up in every generation because if the parent has the allele, as in the purple flower, then they will produce purple offspring, at least some. So here, to introduce the pedigree, we separate it out by generations. Here are three generations, and males are generally exhibited as squares, females as circles. The lines between them indicate reproduction. And the next generation down, we can see that there are a certain number of pairings and a certain number of offspring. In the case of the dominant allele, you have an affected individual. So anyone that has one of those dominant alleles is affected. So if the father is affected, then some of the offspring at least will be also affected. And if they do not get one of the allele, we consider them as unaffected. But again, generally in a pedigree of a dominant trait, you will see the trait show up in every generation. Now, the opposite is true when we consider a recessive form. As we saw with Mendel's crosses, you would have the purple phenotype in the beginning, and then it would maybe disappear in the F1 generation and reappear in F2. So if we look a ped at a pedigree with a recessive trait, you may see them skip generations. So at the top here, we have unaffected parents, but somehow one of them must be a carrier because we see the affected individuals show up. So in this case, we have unaffected in green, affected in red, and then we try to mark the carriers as half a square or a circle. We try to assess whether someone was a carrier. Now we can tell in the second generation, the individual that is second over that has the half circle, we can tell that they must have been a carrier because there are offspring in generation three that are affected. So you have to have the homozygous recessive in order for the individual to be affected. So generally that will lead a trait to skip generations or at least be much more prevalent in one generation and less prevalent and more prevalent. An example of this would be twinning. You can see that every other generation, generally you will have um, a mother give birth to twins. And so there's some hereditary pattern in there. So pedigrees are a way that we depict inheritance patterns by looking at family histories. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.